This is Danny Gould with the Gould team selling Silicon Valley. Welcome everyone to another Silicon Valley market snapshot for the first week here in November of 2019. If you've been watching these videos for any period of time, uh, you'll know that I, if you're a home seller here in Silicon Valley, things are looking very, very good for you. And, and for two main reasons, right? Um, active inventory year over year continues to decline. And on the flip side, the pending sales continue to climb, albeit not dramatically, but a trend is a trend, and over the last six, eight weeks or so, we've noticed a, a, an increase in absorption and pendings and, uh, and an overall uh, decrease in active inventory, both in the single family sector and in the condo and townhome sector, which is important because if you're a condo and townhome owner in Silicon Valley, for the last eight months, you've been hurting. And so, or for the first eight months, I should say, of 2018, uh, 2019, you've been hurting. Not anymore. So let's dive into the heat maps. And uh, you know, before we go into uh, the active inventory for this week, I, I did want to briefly talk about the, I would say, inflation of data inflation, if you will. Uh, the data inflation here on the heat maps, because what you're about to see um, is pretty dramatic in terms of uh, in terms of overall decrease in inventory when you look at the numbers especially in the central part of Santa Clara County but what you have to realize is that by the Q4 of 2018, the market had accelerated 400%, uh, meaning that there was four, four X, over 4x the amount of homes that there was at the beginning of 2018. So there was a dramatic rise in inventory, and that is what really catapulted us into what many consider a, a very poor, not many consider, everyone considers a very poor start uh, to the beginning of this year and, uh, and, the, um, and really into the first two and a half quarters of 2019. And so last year's data at this time was fairly poor if you're a home seller uh, in the sense that there was a lot of inventory. And so when we compare last year's numbers to this year, where we've stabilized and we've reached a, a, a point of stasis, uh, as, as we referred to it over the last couple of weeks, uh, when, you re when you compare it, you know, it's it, not necessarily comparing apples to apples because we were in different uh, market conditions, if you will. And so it's very important to keep that in mind when looking at these numbers because it's not all, it's, it's a lot of sunshines and, sunshine and rainbows for home sellers, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows for home sellers. And we'll get into why that is in a second. But let's look at the active uh, inventory heat maps here for uh, for 2000 or for the first week rather of uh, of uh, November and a couple places to point out obviously the only places that aren't in the red here Saratoga and Campbell and if you've been watching these videos you'll know that I've talked about Campbell having uh, uh, a, a huge surge in new construction and uh, a lot of those new construction homes are being put on the MLS as opposed to before when they were completely kept up by the home builder and so when we that's Campbell, right? Let's talk about Saratoga for a second. Because Saratoga is up 20% year over year in terms of inventory, and when you compare that to how high last year's inventory was already, um, it starts to beg the question, what's the issue here? And what we're starting to see in, uh, in the high end of the market here in Silicon Valley is that active inventory continues to climb uh, year over year, which is a trend we need to pay attention to, especially if you're a home seller here in Silicon Valley for the next, mm, in the next 12 months or so. And I'll explain why. Uh, when we look up in the mid peninsula, I'll go into why that is the case. But let's look at the rest of the, uh, let's look at the rest of the areas here. Other places to keep in mind, Evergreen, Los Gatos, they've been fluctuating. The, they're down this, this week, year over year, and for most of the last two, three months, these areas have been in the black, which is uh, not necessarily the best news if you're a home seller. However, these areas were not as heavily impacted towards the beginning of last year's dip, if you will. And so these areas were impacted later on in the process. And so as a result, 
these these numbers are lagging a little bit uh, when you compare it to the rest of uh, of the market here in the central part of the county. So. The pending listings, the good news is, if you're a home seller here, that the pending sales continue to rise. Very few areas here are, uh, are worth uh, even you know, discussing, but I will, I will go into depth here on Santa Teresa. Now, Santa Teresa is down negative 17%, uh, which is not the best news because Santa Teresa was hit exceptionally hard last year during the beginning, uh, t during Q4 of last year, uh, into the beginning of 2019, and we compare that to active listings, it is down negative 46%. So that's the good news if you're a home seller in Santa Teresa. But the pendings are just not where they need to be. And, and, and truthfully, um, you know, it, like I said, right, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There are areas, there are pockets that um, are still impacted by this, uh, by this correction here that we've experienced um, over the last I don't know, 12 months or so here in Silicon Valley. But I will say this, these, these numbers, this data doesn't really tell us everything because look, if you're a home seller in Santa Teresa, yeah, you might wanna consider waiting a little bit. And, and, and then the reason is, is because the demand just isn't there yet and the pending sales reflect that even though there's far less competition than there was last year. Remember what I just said? That's kind of comparing uh, uh, two very distinct markets in terms of market conditions. Last year, there was a huge surge in inventory. Everyone was going haywire and homes all of a sudden were taking way longer to sell and a lot of homes were just, a lot of sellers were just pulling their homes off the market after 30, 45 days because they were like, what's going on? Uh, with this huge surge in inventory, the buyers had so much more to choose from. And so from, a, uh, from, a, from this perspective, the fact that pending sales are also down, that is not good news if you're a home seller here uh, in, in a place like say Santa Teresa. With one specific caveat, um, and I know there's always a there's always a but if right. Um, if you're in Santa Teresa, right, and you say have a home, uh, in, you know, within walking distance of Sakamoto, right, that's a that's a great school, right, and so that's an area where you might have something that's desirable. Uh, more desirable to the uh, to the uh, buyers there in Santa Teresa than say um, another part of the uh, of the community and so when you start to really think about what does my home have to offer and what's the desirability factor when we uh, when we plug it into the uh, to the ecosystem at that time then you start to really get into the nitty-gritty then you really start to get into the micro and that's what I'm saying like these numbers are great and all and and, and paying attention to the data paying attention to the numbers is absolutely important when because this data is I mean getting fed or, or ingesting this kind of information on a weekly basis is more than most people do so you're already ahead but the reality is is that this is often not enough because yeah like Santa Teresa, there might be you. There, you might be dissuaded, right, from uh, from putting your home on the market. But when you sit down with me and and we go over the uh, we go over your micro situation, maybe you're the only home in say, you know, that you're the only home in a quarter mile radius of your house that has over two thousand square feet. Well, that, that's something to offer, right? And so the desirability factor is, is not often um, talked about, especially when we're looking at these numbers. And so there's so much more to look at than just what do the heat maps say. This gives us a, a base level analysis for the market, but then we really have to dig in and go deep into the dirt with you in order to really figure out whether or not selling is a good decision for you at this time. And truthfully, it's not always the best decision for you at this time. And so that's what the, that's what the analysis about, that, that's what um, sitting down and really going over the, the nitty gritty, if you will, uh, in order to make the decision that's best for you and ultimately for your family. Uh, so back to the heat maps. Now, Keep in mind, um, other areas like this, uh, other areas here in, in, in uh, Santa Clara, oh, I did want to point out one thing. Sorry, I'm extreme of consciousness right now. Alma Den. 
A lot of people have been asking me, and specifically Bob. Bob, shout out to you. Thanks for watching. And uh, Bob was asking, well, where's Almaden in all this? And and, uh, and Almaden is right here. I know it's kind of vague, and I know it's not the best placement. And uh, I wish we had a slightly um, more, I, I guess, uh, expanded map so that we could, you know, kind of get that number to where it really should be, which is like down here-ish. But yes, these numbers correlate to Amaden. So if you're a home seller in Amaden right now, things are looking really good for you. And, and things have been trending in the, in the correct direction for you um, over the last couple of months. Negative 17% year over year in terms of active inventory and additional absorption in terms of pending listings here for, uh, for the beginning of, of November in 2019. So great news uh, for you if you're a home seller there in Amaden. Now let's move on to the Mid Peninsula. And remember, we've, we've talked about um, these areas and, and if you've been watching these videos for any period of time, you'll know that in the, in the Mid Peninsula region here, we've seen a, a, an increase in inventory, a surge in inventory, which is uh, you know, not the best news if you're a home seller in these areas. And uh, you know, here in Palo Alto, we're up 25%. In Los Altos, we're up 52% in Los Altos Hills, up 95. Obviously, in Mountain View, you're chilling, negative 20%. Now, pendings, the only area where the additional inventory is being absorbed is Palo Alto, uh, plus 25% there, and then we have uh, plus 46% in terms of pending listings. Let's look at Los Altos and Los Altos Hills, though, because we're at plus 28 and plus 50 pendings as opposed to plus 52, plus 95. And so here's the point I wanna drive home to you. If you're a home seller in the Mid Peninsula, or if whoa, or if you're a home seller really in any sort of uh, uh, primary market, top end luxury market here in Silicon Valley, and and um, these numbers are there are reflective of what's going on right now in the uh, in the luxury market in that upper uh, quartile of the market, and uh, which is pending uh, pending sales are are waning. Uh, so, so appetite has uh, has uh, been very on and off, and inventory continues to rise. And so, what's if this trend continues? Really, uh, we will see a pressure on prices because we've we've talked about this before. What happens in the high end here in Silicon Valley eventually trickles down to the rest of the quartiles here in Silicon in Silicon Valley. You know, the the the, the secondary, the second, the tertiary, and then the the bottom quartile. The bottom quartile. Uh, being the least impacted uh, in terms of that because everyone needs a house and affordable housing is always um, is always hot here in Silicon Valley. But when you look at the top quartile of the market, you know, uh, and and um, this happens f frequently, truthfully, is when uh, when pendings continue to to diminish and active inventory goes up, that puts pressure on prices in the high end, and then suddenly uh, the the pressure causes the prices to drop, and then suddenly a lot of those people in that secondary uh, quartile, those buyers are now able to afford many of them that next echelon of home, and so what happens? They go, and then pendings go, and the pendings uh, diminish in the second quartile, and so on and so forth. A domino effect all caused by a lack of demand in that upper quartile of the market. And so, uh, not to mention surge of inventory, in, which is a double whammy if you're, uh, if you're a home seller. So uh, let's not, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a fear monger here. I'm not here to instill um, any fear in you guys, but let's be cognizant of this because this is very, um, this is very important if you're a home seller here in Silicon Valley because this could end up impacting uh, the price that your home sells for, period. And then finally, South County here. And uh, I love covering South County because you know sometimes the South County numbers are not always correlative with the rest of the market. Um, you know, especially when we look at places like San Martin and Gilroy, they are what we would consider, you know, secondary markets in a lot of cases. Um, Morgan Hill less so now, uh, especially with, uh, and, and I'll have to fact check here, but I was uh, have it on good authority that um, Google and other tech companies are actually working on uh, improving transit lines down to Morgan Hill uh, to make Morgan Hill even more accessible for uh, tech employees, uh, which is 
huge, which is absolutely huge because Morgan Hill is booming right now. And uh, I really love uh, what's going on there in terms of uh, the growth, uh, in terms of the new construction. It feels very young. It feels hip. They're doing a lot to make it, you know, um, uh, they're doing a lot to make it desirable and attractive to that, you know, late 30s, early 40s, I got a few kids crowd that works at Google, Apple, or one of the other major tech companies. They're doing a really great job there uh, of, of appealing to that crowd, but also uh, there's a certain charm to the city as well, which is, uh, which is very nice. So I, I, I feel very uh, bullish on Morgan Hill uh, for, all the, um, for all of those things. And uh, the numbers are, you know, reflective of that. I definitely active listings here in Morgan Hill are up. And that being said, though, the demand is there in droves. And with all the new construction that's going on in Morgan Hill, many of it, m most of it, a lot of it is actually on MLS. Not all of it, but a good, a good amount of it. Morgan Hill's a high development zone right now. So that increased inventory isn't super. Um, isn't super surprising, but what should be great news if you're a home seller in Morgan Hill is that the demand is there and uh, it's seemingly there to stay because it's been very high for the last couple of months. And of course, this number dwindles year, uh, month over month, but what, uh, or week over week, but when we look at month over month trends, uh, things are looking very good for you if you're a home seller in Morgan Hill. Gilroy, on the other hand, things have tapered off since that surge two, uh, two months ago where Gilroy was looking very hot. Uh, now, not so much. It's pretty much the opposite story where uh, active inventory is up and pending sales are down. And um, that has been a trend now for about a month. So who knows how long that's going to continue or, or I can't really forecast out into the future there. But again, right, because it is a, a secondary market, uh, you do expect it to kind of like uh, feel the after effects of what's going on in Santa Clara County. With, with everything that's going on there, though, I, I would expect heading into 2020, Gilroy to pick back up. And I'll explain why, you know, right now, as we look and we project into spring quarter of 2020, and we project into really what's going on uh, in uh, Q2, Q3, Q4 of 2020, um, a lot of what's going on right now is gonna play itself out by that time. And I'll explain. What I said last week, if you watched my video last week, I talked about the importance, if you're a home seller, of considering to put your home on the first two weeks of January 2020. And the reason is, is because uh, the competition will be dramatically lower than at any other point next year. Uh, we are a very reactionary, <laughs> we're very reactionary here. And by the end of Q1 of next year, we are going to see prices increase, um, not dramatically, it's not gonna be a, a huge meteoric rise, if you will, but it will be enough to make people go, wow, I should maybe consider selling my home because a lot of those people that thought about selling at the beginning of this year backed off, put a break on their plans, put a hold on them because they saw what was going on with the market. And a lot of those people are going to react by the end of Q1, put their home on the market all of a sudden. I do think that we are going to see um, high inventory levels heading into Q2, Q3 maybe Q4 of next year. So um, if, you are a, if you are a home seller, I would highly encourage you to rethink your strategy heading into 2020 here because I'm very bullish, very, very bullish on 2020 as a whole. But I think that that growth is gonna occur predominantly in Q1. And uh, you heard it here first, folks. This is Danny Gould with the Gould Team selling Silicon Valley and I will catch all of you in the next video.